I've literally just discovered this amazing section of the forest. The moss is so vibrant and lush and there's thunder. <gasps> Come on, give us a big bang. So cool. Yes! In this video, I'm going to talk about how to be a naturalist, and I'm not talking about naturists, which are naked people. I'm talking about people who are aware of nature. They come to nature to learn, to immerse themselves, to connect with the natural world. And I'm going to give my tips on how to be a naturalist because I feel like sometimes nature seems like it's not accessible, but nature is free. You can go into a park, even in a city, and see nature. And now it's raining. One thing that I think is incredible about the natural world is that you're always learning. Even David Attenborough doesn't know everything about the natural world, and that's the amazing thing. There is so much to learn about from animals, trees, fungus. It's awesome. There's so much cool stuff in nature. Nature is also our best teacher and there is a lot of research that has shown that nature can positively impact your mental health. So it's good for us. It teaches us a lot and I mean, it's pretty. So what's not to like, right? I've come to a river and this is a great place to put up a trail camera and see what kind of animals come on the bank of the river. And I found otter sprites and on the trail camera I found American mink, which is an invasive species. But one thing that's really important to learn is tracking wildlife. Animals leave various different tracks that can help you identify who it was, who may have eaten someone, what direction they went. One easy way is poo. Obviously animals go for the toilet so you can find what they've deposited. Some animals like squirrels, it's very hard to find their poo. So then you can look at footprints and their tracks. Each animal has a unique footprint so you can identify between a wild cat, a squirrel, a hare. I just found some spring. <laughs> Let's have a look. Sprints are really cool because you can actually work out what the animal has been eating. And you can also do that with owl pellets where they cough up the skull and the bones from whatever they've eaten. There's all sorts of cool ways that you can track and identify wildlife. I think it's time to go home now. Once you've started to spot signs of wildlife, the next step is to learn how to identify. Watching and listening can help you learn which song belongs to which bird, you can also use field guides and ID books. You can now search a photo on Google, so you can 
take photos in the field and basically get the identification for what's in the photo. You can also find a guided nature walk that you can join. There are also various nature groups online and on Facebook and you can find other nature people in your community. A big thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. On Squarespace it's really easy to have a professional website. I've had my shop there, a blog, there's a number of templates on Squarespace that you can customise or you can create a website from scratch. With my shop launching in a few weeks, I've been really focused on creating a website that reflects my style a bit more. If you'd like to give Squarespace a go, head to squarespace.com slash dannyconnorwild. You can save 10% off a new purchase of a website or a domain. The next step is you actually want to start observing wildlife. You can use binoculars to get closer to animals and view them. You can also use a camera, that's obviously what I do. And you're going to learn way more out in nature observing than any documentary or lecture. Let nature come to you. It's a bit of a test of your patience and perseverance, but if you wait, nature usually will come to you and approach you. Sometimes you can stalk animals and you can get behind a tree and slowly walk towards the animal behind the tree. Make sure you don't step on branches and make a loud noise. Hello. So there's a squirrel. And I'm going to show you how I would stalk an animal. That's not a squirrel because I know the squirrel. It would be very chill if I just walk up to it. So this is what I'd do if it was maybe a deer. The squirrel can't see me right now because of the trees. So what I would do is I'd walk up to it, look, and then if the deer is eating and relaxed, I would then go again and basically do this. Much slower. One of the coolest things you can experience in nature is finding something that you've never seen before or seeing some behaviour that you've never read about or heard anything about. Once I was in Costa Rica and I was watching two young spider monkeys who were basically drunk. They were eating these leaves that clearly would make them intoxicated and they kept licking them and eating them and they would smear their saliva all over their bodies and they were clearly having a great time and I was trying to work out why they would do this. One of the reasons I thought was that they were trying to cover their fur in this saliva because it could deter mosquitoes or some sort of insects and parasites. Maybe they were trying to clean their stomach Maybe they were young and they'd never experienced these leaves before and it was a mistake. But what I didn't think about was maybe they were just eating the leaves because they wanted to be intoxicated and have fun. And especially with monkeys, that is quite likely. <laughs> they're intelligent, they know what they're doing and that's something I didn't consider at the time. You can also keep a nature journal. This is somewhere you can write your observations. You can do little illustrations or drawings of things that you've seen. You can even collect some samples and bring them home and then draw them. And this can be great for learning the leaves of different tree species. So you can bring different leaves home, draw them, work out the species, and then you can reference back to it. Of course, it is easier just to write your field observations on your phone, so whatever works for you.
The mist this morning is crazy. It's three o'clock in the morning, four, and we were having a late night, saw the mist, and now we're outside. <laughs> I think this is a good moment to share my last tip for being a naturalist, which is don't be scared of nature. I've been stalked by a puma. I've almost stepped on a ferdelance, which is a very dangerous snake. I've had a flesh-eating maggot in my neck and I still love and seek nature. Nature really isn't trying to hurt you. A lot of animals will react in self-defense and the fertilance that I almost stepped on, he let me know I was too close. I didn't even see him and he started to rattle his tail in the leaf litter and he was warning me that I was too close and he kept us both safe. Unfortunately, a lot of animals sense the world with their mouths, sharks included, they don't have hands and that's a bit problematic. But really, if you stay alert, gentle, and respect wildlife, it won't hurt you. <laughs> <laughs>